The Menzies auction includes a fantastic and very large painting by Arthur Boyd, kneeling figure with canvas and black can, painted in about 1973, painted it uh, in London when Boyd had been living there for 15 years. Boyd went to London in the late 1950s. He'd had a very successful run in Melbourne. He was uh, commissioned by the Olympic Games to produce a sculpture and then of course the fantastic bride paintings which are the foundation of Arthur Boyd's fame and his career were produced uh, in the following year and exhibited at the Australian Galleries in Collingwood. These are the paintings that Boyd is now, if you like, best known for but they also represent the foundation of Boyd's uh, style of working, his type of working. Complicated allegories with uh, references to his personal life and also to art, to the history of art, his own experience of art and his family experiences. It's mixed in together in a very distinctive and very typical way for Arthur Boyd. He had spent time obviously at the National Gallery of Victoria. He was acquainted with the fantastic Rembrandts we own in Melbourne. Also he knew the wonderful Blake watercolours and these are both very clearly evident in Boyd's style. His, they are uh, strong artistic influences which endured for his whole life. But when he arrived in London, the Dutch paintings, the Bruegels, the Rembrandts, these sort of Dutchish, Flemish type paintings which had formed the greatest part of Boyd's life and which, which were the influence on things like this Melbourne Burning and Saul and David, the really important paintings from the 40s and 50s, gave way to an interest in Italian art. And he went to the National Gallery in London and there he saw uh, uh, the fantastic painting by Titian, The Death of Actian. It's a very famous Titian. In it, um, the goddess uh, is bathing uh, with her friends in the forest and Actian, who's a hunter, sort of stumbles upon them inadvertently, catches Diana undressed. Diana takes a very dim view of this and in her way, godly way, she converts him into a, a stag and he's then hunted down by his own dogs by a sort of act of uh, mythological justice. This kind of theme, this kind of the uh, story uh, had some appeal to Boyd beyond the visual characteristics of Titian's painting. It's this complex allegorical uh, program that Titian employed. Another painting by a different artist, Pierre di Cosimo, a bit earlier, painted in about uh, 1495, I think, is the famous Death of Procris. And in it you see this lying figure. It's a, uh, she looks asleep, uh, but she's beautiful, and we understand that she's dead, and she's being mourned over by a satyr, and there's also this dog that uh, observes her, is seated next to her. And this composition, together with the Titian, are uh, in so many of the paintings that Boyd painted after his arrival in London, you can see their, their, their lasting resonance in these paintings. And it's, I think it's the, the complexity, it's the sophistication and the mystery of these paintings that appeal to Boyd. Uh, and consequently, paintings like the kneeling figure painting uh, is almost completely um, mysterious. It's, it's very difficult for us to imagine what was going through Boyd's mind. You, you see this figure lying prone or kneeling, and there's a dog adjacent to it, and he's leaning forward with some paintbrushes in a very stark landscape. But the left-hand side of the composition is taken up with this very deep black can. On the right-hand side, there's a figure that's actually leaving the composition. What does it all mean? That these paintings are a composite of his own life, his own personal circumstances, and his own vision of his position in the history of art. Mm -hmm.